Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about fixing mistakes in training and restoring broken trust and your bond. If there's been sort of like a break in trust of your bird, you know, something's happened, or there's been a sort of uh, breakdown in training, this video is mostly about sorting those out. Because again, it's been requested by lots of people. It's something we all encounter when living with parrots and training them. And I thought I'd give some simple tips on how to kind of get past it. So my first and best tip, especially when it comes to training, is going back to your last most successful step. Say for example, you're training a spin and your parrot just won't spin anymore. Maybe take it back to the last step you were successful of. So you just started training and your parrot's happy to spin halfway. Go back to that and build up that basic. Then go back to doing it the full way around. If you're training a more complex behavior, maybe um, a flight recall over long distance, take distance back a little bit. If you're training with tricks and shapes, for example, just, and you've got loads of them, it's confusing your parrot, go back to one. If you're, uh, let's be trying to think of another quick example. If you are training like the flip on the finger and your parrot only goes halfway, just get them to do a bat bird halfway. Just take it back to the last step you were successful and reinforce that more strongly, get that more consistent, then go back to training a more complex level. And often that can help re sort of reset it in your bird's mind and basically reform behavior to the way you want it to be. My next tip is uh, works for bonding and training and that's additional positive reinforcement. Make sure you are positive reinforcing for what you want to see, be it interactions with you, if you're trying to restore trust or like if you want them to do a behavior, make sure it's reinforcing and it's motivating for them. You know, you want them to be motivated, you want them to be happy, and that can come in the form of treats or praise and just making sure that things work the right way. You are a naughty little boy, you want more treats, don't you? Or you want to sell. But yes, you want to see the best possible behaviors, so you want to make sure it's positively reinforced. Following on from this, make sure you're using the most reinforcing treats. You don't want your bird to be working for something that's less than ideal. That means regular treat hierarchy tests, making sure you stay on top of what they actually want and that that treat isn't in the main diet. For example, these guys seldom get hemp seeds in their main diet because they really like to work for it. So they get it in foraging and when they're doing trade or bonding work with us. So it's really important that you, you basically use the most motivating things. We don't like to work for free, neither do these guys. So make sure that's in place too. Now, this is more about restoring trust, this tip. Say, for example, your parrot's had a break in trust of your hands or you, you want to restore that trust. So that means you may need to do some contact training, which is in the my How to Pet and Cuddle Your Bird, which I'll leave a card for now, to get them used to hands again. You may need to do positive reinforcement around hands because hands are mostly where breaks in trust happen. You may need to give your bird a bit of space and work on your basic bonding techniques all over again. You know, um, restoring tr breaks in trust do happen. For example, there's a vet visit. So you need to take it back a step. It's almost like going back to the last successful step, but with your bonding work. So do that work around hands, do some decent work around whatever object is causing the fear and get that trust back in place. What do you want from me? What do you want? So demanding. You'll hear me talk about this in a lot of videos. It is really important. Make sure environmental factors are good when you're doing your training and when you're doing your bonding work. Loud noises, um, changes in the environment, they can all set you back and make it more difficult to fix mistakes. So you want to make sure environmental factors are the best possible. You know, loud planes flying overhead while you're trying to do a training session or a, like sensitive bonding work, trust restoration work, it's not gonna help. So make sure everything is as calm as you can possibly make it. Another thing me and Sophie find very useful when working on bonding work or basically fixing training mistakes is recording our sessions. So we'll set up a little mobile, um, we'll make one of these cameras. Um, I actually did that on Patreon recently because people wanted to see a live sort of unedited session and we'll record what's going on. And that way we can see where we've made any mistakes, where things have gone well, and we can report, um, repeat it in the future. If you don't want to record, you can just have a little sort of checklist or a little notepad, a little diary, and you can keep that to keep track of your training success and how things are going. And remember, it may not always be consistent, you may have ups and downs, but it is important and really useful to record stuff. Scampi's really got into this habit of liking to sit on my elbow during these filming sessions, it's quite cute. I'm not too good on my arm, but funny anyway. So my last tip, is try for one successful interaction or 
rep repetition of your training. Say for example, you've got a recall, you have a struggle with it, just try for one rep. One rep of it, if you've got an interaction, try for one positive interaction with you to help sort of restore the behavior or start building that trust again. Do the one, then stop, and then go back to it later in shorter sessions. This can be really helpful. Oh dear, someone's being noisy outside. Um, so it can be really helpful because you're putting less pressure on yourself, less pressure on your bird, and you can build up success and increase the reps later when it's more consistent. It's kind of like going at your bird's own pace. If your bird is very nervous or unsure of the behavior, <laughs> very noisy, um, it can sort of help build up in a very slow way. So guys, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found these tips for restoring trust or fixing training mistakes useful. If you have any tips of your own, happy to hear from you down in the comments. But in the meantime, from me and a couple of very noisy conyers, take care and see you later.